Hi guys, it is a stormy day here in the end times in the former paradise of South Austin, Texas here on this gloomy Tuesday afternoon. Well, it's after 6 o'clock now. I think that's somewhere around uh, Tuesday. I, mean, I don't know if it's Monday or Tuesday anymore, guys. I don't even know what the hell day of the week it is. I honestly do not know if it is Monday or Tuesday. This is how tired I am. I have been out dealing with this goddamn tree, this giant hackberry tree, cleaning it up out of my neighbor's yard. Good Lord, and, and I am about to fall over and collapse as the thunderstorms blow in, but it is now after six o'clock, and before I head out to go join my clueless, lovable friends for a margarita, uh, I'm just going to do what I do every day, and uh, better late than never. So that's bringing you my We Are So Fucked Doomer headline of the day, and so of course, we all know what the uh, what the Doomer headline of the day is. And well, I don't know. I haven't talked about it this much on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. I've been talking about this more over there on Collapse Chronicles. And that is this new giant 1,800-page report from the United Nations. Their biodiversity checkup for the planet... Uh, basically saying we're fucked. It is the single grimmest, most we are so fucked government document ever released, I assume, in the history of humanity. And so, uh, good lord. Uh, and, you know, good for the mainstream media actually paying attention. Let's uh, look at a few of the headlines if my computer wants to, uh, there, there's probably, I, I, I don't know how many, but my computer really doesn't feel like joining this rant. This computer, I really do need to throw it in the garbage. Uh, here is ninth dead whale this year washes ashore in San Francisco. Here is U.S. refuses to sign declaration protecting the Arctic because it references climate change. Uh, good Lord, it looks like we got plenty of other uh, plenty of other stories here. Uh, okay, well, uh, maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Well, I guess I'm wrong, uh, guys. Maybe the mainstream media is no longer talking about the single biggest uh, story on the planet since the mainstream media was invented. Uh, and I am two-thirds of the way down and, and on the science pages. Now, last night at midnight, guys, I opened up uh, at midnight last night, you know, they, they released the report yesterday on May 6th. So last night, three-fourths of the stories on the science page at Yahoo News were about, we are completely, totally fucked. It, it, it was like the biggest story uh, on the science pages. It is now 18 hours later, and the story has been completely dropped from the uh, science pages uh, on the mainstream media, and now my computer has locked up anyway. Uh, Un-fucking believable, guys. 18 hours ago, this, this UN report was the single biggest story, as it should be, on the science pages. It is, I don't know, now my computer just ate the science pages. As far as I know, the biggest story uh, on the planet... Uh, 
not not mentioned, but fortunately, I I did before I went to bed last night. I just didn't have time to get to it. I picked out my single favorite story of the of the two dozen stories from the science pages. I picked out my favorite story, which is actually a commentary from the animal kingdom. The animal kingdom has gotten together and brought us this commentary simply titled, Bye, so take it away, animal kingdom. <clears throat> so, you've probably heard about the new report saying human-caused climate change, well, it's not just climate, climate change and everything else, it is putting about a million different species of animal and plants at risk of extinction. And we, meaning the animal kingdom, just wanted to pop on over and say that it's true. A lot of us are on our way out the door. Bye. Seriously, look at the time. We can't believe it's been hundreds of thousands of years already. That's a pretty long time when you think about it. And you can't go on and coexisting as humans and animals on the same planet forever. And you know what they say, it's better to burn out than to fade away. We're going to take our cue here and get out of your hair pretty soon. Adios! We have had some really good times, us and you humans. Who can forget the crazy days of the Pleistocene epoch? Sure, the Ice Age was no picnic, but it was honestly pretty great later on hanging out and watching y'all evolve. We've had this whole symbiotic thing going where animals and Homo erectus could live side by side. Over the years, we've gotten to migrate with you as you've moved around and really had a chance to, to find ourselves and flourish in new places. It was paradise. It would have been awesome if life could have stayed that way forever. You know, we're not trying to flake or anything. Believe us. Look, you guys are obviously busy with your machines and your wars and your relentless pursuit of profit. Sometimes people and animals just grow apart. And that's okay. We've always been pretty chill with what you guys are doing, so don't worry. It's totally cool. A flourishing ecosystem that supports all of Earth's creatures isn't going to be everyone's thing. It's your habitat now, after all, and you have been gracious hosts to us for a long time, so thanks. But since we've got you here, we do want to mention that it hasn't been all fun and games. If we're really being honest, we're still not totally keen on poaching, pollution, zoos, deforestation, or raising us in terrible conditions for the express purpose of slaughtering and eating us. Those things are a kind of buzzkill. Don't get us wrong, we're not trying to be overly critical of you humans, since you obviously have your reasons. We just wanted to get that off our chest before we get going. Also, it is sort of weird you breed some of us as pets. Just saying. What do you think, little dog? Is it, is it a little bit weird? as the thunder rolls. Okay. Do we wish we could stick around a little longer? Sure, a little. When the dodo pieced out 
back in the late 1600s, we were like, really? Already? The party's just getting started. But now when we look around, the oceans are heating up, our food is running out, and most of our natural environments are gone, we wonder if maybe the dodo was right to take off when it did. The vibe here is getting kind of weird in here. Not that the last couple hundred years of rapid industrialization have been all bad for us, but let's just say the earth is not quite as fun for us as it used to be. We don't want to belabor our departure. No one likes a guest who overstays their welcome, so we'll just do a quick sound off of who is heading out soon, so you can say a quick toodaloo. Signed, the Bengal Tiger, Amur Leopard, Hawksbill Sea Turtle, Chinese Giant Salamander, Javan Rhinoceros, Sumatran Rhinoceros, Black Rhinoceros, Giant Panda, Vaquita, Eastern Gorilla, Sumatran Orangutan, Bornean Orangutan, Sayola, Garial, Asian Elephant, Philippine Crocodile, Chinese Pangolin, Malayan Tiger, Mountain Pygmy Possum, Andaman Shrew, Western Swamp Turtle, Philippine Forest Turtle, Plowshare Tortoise, Cross River Gorilla, Eastern Lowland Gorilla, South China Tiger, Pika, Giant Otter, Red Wolf, Tasmanian Devil, Peppered Tree Frog, Northern Tinker Frog, Mountain Mist Frog, Armored Frog, Yungella Torrent Frog, Sumatran Elephant, African Wild Donkey, Saiga Antelope, haven't we already heard from the Saiga Antelope, Giant Munt Jack, Adax, Bowhead Whale, Beluga Whale, Balkan Lynx, Asiatic Cheetah, Gloomy Tube-Nosed Bat, Aru Flying Fox, Central Rock Rat, Pygmy Hog, Gilbert's Potoru, Allen's Larista, Carpentarian Rock Rat, Kangaroo Island, Dunart, Darwin's Fox, Peruvian Black Spider Monkey, Spoonbilled Sandpiper, Siberian Crane, Bengal Florican, Regent Honey Eater, Orange Bellied Parrot, Great Indian Bustard, Sociable Lapwing, White Billed Heron, Whooping Crane, Red Vented Cockatoo, Himalayan Quail, Hainan Black Crested Gibbon, Bulmer's Fruit Bat, Philippine Naked Bat Fruit Bat, Fijian Monkey Faced Bat, Northern White Cheeked Gibbon, Indri, Andahela Sportive Lemur, Manambo Sportive Lemur, Shamalaza Lemur, all the other sportive lemurs, Celebes Crested Macaque, Pagai Island Macaque, Sarawak Surly, Kipunji Hirola Tamarol, Wild Bactrian Camel, <coughs> White Rumped Vulture, Red Headed Vulture, Indian Vulture, Slender Billed Vulture, Long Comb Sawfish, Gang Ganges Shark, Red Finned Blue Eye, Finless Porpoise, Squatina, 
northern river shark, Pondicherry shark humphead wrasse, orphan salamander, cloud forest salamander, Monte Escondido salamander, El Cusico salamander, <clears throat> Zarciardo web-footed salamander, Cerro Pital salamander, Blue Whale, Black-footed ferret, Yangtze finless porpoise, Zapotec salamander, and basically every one of us from the wetlands. <clears throat> Signing off on their on their guest editorial. We're definitely missing a bunch of us who are just slipping out really quickly without saying farewell. We hope that's okay. You probably won't even notice we're gone. We're not all leaving yet. Just a lot of us. But we don't want to go out on a bad note. We have so many wonderful memories of the pre-Anthropocene era, and we don't want those fond recollections of vibrant, life-sustaining forests and jungles and prairies to be forgotten. But it is time for us to mosey on down the dusty trail. Sayonara. P.S. We hope you don't mind, but we're taking most of the plants with us, too. And uh, I'm sure you know who that was. That was from The Onion. That was from The Onion, which was the single best review of this 1,800-page laundry list of the reasons we are fucked on this planet. It is game over for planet Earth. The United Nations knows it. Sancho Panza knows it. The Onion knows it. I know it. And you know it. We are so fucked. And uh, so I guess the biggest story, uh, at least since I started uh, Humpty Dumpty Tribe nine years ago, lasted 18 hours in the mainstream media and now they can find something else to talk about. But as long as we're over there at the Onion, I want to thank Alert Tribes member Naveen for sending me this associated story with the one I just read. And uh, I think there might be an interview here for Collapse Chronicles. What do you think, guys? So this one uh, is titled, Scientist, quote, Look, one-third of the human race has to die for civilization to be sustainable. So how do we want to do this? All right. Saying there is no way around it at this point a coalition of scientists announced Monday, yesterday, you know, in conjunction with this uh, paper being released by the United Nations. Uh, a coalition of scientists announced yesterday that one-third of the world population must die to prevent wide-scale depletion of the planet's resources and that humankind needs to figure out immediately how it wants to go about killing off more than two billion members of its species. I don't know why they drew the line at one-third. But anyway, you know this is the UN, and you don't want to scare people. You know, you, you need to soft-pedal. Uh, the UN needs to soft-pedal these stories. So, you know, they're saying one-third of the population, but anybody uh, who listens or listened to Alex Jones knows that the New World Order, which of course is another name for the United Nations, uh, is working to depopulate 90 percent. 
they're actually trying to figure out uh, how to depopulate 90% of the planet. You know, Alex and all of these depopulation agenda guys have been talking about this since the Georgia Guidestones were erected back in the 1970s. You know, these, um, these conspiracy wackos talking about the New World Order UN plot to, uh, to depopulate the planet by 90%. You notice that while they've been talking about this, the population of the planet since the Georgia Guidestones were erected has more than doubled. Uh, so something, somebody somewhere is confused. But anyway, I'm getting off on a long-lived the Georgia Guidestones rant. So let's get back to this article uh, about the science, these UN scientists. Okay. Representing multiple fields of study, including ecology, agriculture, biology, and economics, the researchers told reporters that facts are facts. Humanity has far exceeded its sustainable population size, so either one in three humans can choose how they want to die themselves, or there can be some sort of government-mandated liquidation program. But either way, people have to start dying, and soon the scientists confirmed. This is Dr. Edwin Peters from Cambridge, a colleges from Cambridge University. Quote, I'm just going to level with you. The Earth's carrying capacity will no longer be able to keep up with population growth, and civilization will end unless large swaths of human beings are killed. So, the question is, how do we want to do this? Do we want to give everyone a number and implement a death lottery system? Incinerate the nation's children? I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of leaning towards incinerating the, nature, the nation's... Why do they put nations? Incinerate the planet's children? Kill off an entire race of people? I would suggest starting with white people. Give everyone a shotgun and let them sort it out themselves? Otherwise known as Mad Max. It's completely up to you, he added, explaining that he and his colleagues were, quote, open to whatever. Quote, unfortunately, we are well past the point of controlling overpopulation through education, birth control, and the empowerment of women. And, and guys, I have to say, uh, if, if I hear one more person uh, tell me in an interview with Collapse Chronicles, the next person who tells me that we need, that we are going to solve the problem of overpopulation by empowering women, it could be a quite a moment on Collapse Chronicles. And, you know, and my real heroes, the, the first, uh, the, the first interview I ever had on Collapse Chronicles was with my hero Paul Ehrlich. And he is just doing the company line now. The best way to solve overpopulation is to empower women. Anyway, where was I? Back to uh, Dr. Peters. Unfortunately, we are well past the point of blah, blah, blah and the empowerment of women. In fact, we should probably kill 300 million women right off the bat, close quote. Because the world's population may double again by the end of this century, an outcome 
that would lead to a considerable decrease in the availability of food, land, and water. Researchers said that, bottom line, it would be helpful if a lot of people chose to die willingly. The advantage there being that these volunteers could decide for themselves whether they wish to die slowly, quickly, painfully, or peacefully. Additionally, the scientists noticed that in order to stop the destruction of global environmental systems in heavily populated areas, there is no avoiding the reality that half the world's progeny will have to be sterilized. Again, this is way, this is called soft peddling. There is one way to save the planet that we have any chance at this point, and that is to sterilize one hundred percent of their progeny, the world's progeny. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. <clears throat> okay, this is Dr. Chelsea Klepper, head of agricultural studies at Purdue University. She is the leading proponent of a worldwide death day in which 2.3 billion people would kill themselves in mass at the exact same time. Quote, the longer we wait, the higher the number of people who will have to die. So, we might as well just get it over with. At this point, it's merely a question of coordination. If we can get the populations of New York City, Los Angeles, Beijing, India, Europe, and Latin America to voluntarily off themselves at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on June 1st, we're talking three weeks, we can kill the people that need to be killed and the planet can finally start renewing its resources, close quote. And I don't want to argue with uh, Dr. Klepper, but obviously Dr. Klepper is unaware of the fact that if we killed every single human being on the planet outside of the country of China, if every single human being on the planet went Michael Rupert tonight, China, with no help, from anybody else on the planet would destroy the planet. Okay, where were we? Thus far, humanity has been presented with a great variety of death options. Among them, poisoning the world's water supply with cadmium. You know, I'm, I'm kind of, but the problem with that is it, it won't, cadmium poisoning is not specific to humans. And this is the problem with all of these non-sterilization, non-surgical ideas, is that so many of these ideas, like poisoning the, the water supply or sending it out through chemtrails, has the deleterious effect of poisoning our fellow earthlings we're trying to save by taking ourselves out. So, it, it, you know, don't run away with poisoning the world's water supply quite yet. But anyway, this one sounds a little more reasonable. Picking one person per household to be killed in the privacy of his or her home. You know, that one sounds reasonable mass beheadings. Now this is another one specific to humans. Mass beheadings and of course uh, there is gathering 2.3 billion people all in one place and obliterating them with one single hydrogen bomb. You know, we can think about that one. 
Sources confirm that if a death solution is not in place by May 31st, the UN, in the interest of preserving the human race, will mobilize its peacekeeping forces and gun down as many people as necessary. This is Dr. Henry Craig of the UN's Population Research Institute. I don't care how it happens, but a ton of Africans have to go because by 2025, there is no way that continent will be able to feed itself. And by my estimation, three babies have to die for every septogenarian because their longer life expectancy means babies have the potential to release far more greenhouse gases going forward." Close quote. So while the majority of the world's populace reportedly, according to this UN poll, reportedly understands this is the only option left to save civilization. Not all members of the human race are eager to die. This is a Norwich, Connecticut resident and father of three, Jason Atkins, weighing in on this debate going on in the mainstream media today. Quote, I personally would rather live, but taking the long view, I can see how ensuring the survival of humanity is best. I guess if we were to do it over again, it would make more sense to do a better job conserving the Earth's finite resources. Hopefully, the people who remain on the planet will use the mass slaughter of their friends and loved ones as an incentive to be more responsible going forward. There you go, and thank you, The Onion, The Onion, for having the most honest reporting of any single media outlet on the planet. But not even the onion is going to go there. That the human race needs to go. It's us or every one of our fellow earthlings. And uh, so anyway, I'm going to wrap up these We Are So Fucked Doomer headlines of the day. And uh, as the traffic to Garfield died down, no, I gotta have time. We're gonna go over to Collapse Chronicles and the journal Nature uh, and check in with the methane bomb, the latest methane bomb report from uh, the journal Nature Permafrost Collapse is accelerating carbon release. The sudden collapse of thawing soils in the Arctic might double the warning from greenhouse gases released from tundra. There you go, but if you want to read a, a real We Are So Fucked Doomsday headline of the day, come over there to Collapse Chronicles and we will talk about the methane bomb. Get out there and enjoy it while you still can, guys. All onion joking aside, we're fucked. Bye, guys.